Welcome to Homemaker's Small Garden again and we're now just finishing the first week of June so summer's arrived and it's certainly looking quite different to how it looked even six weeks ago. Not everything has gone to plan this spring and some of this video I'll be showing you the problems which is useful because it's things to learn from and there are many of them. Just before I begin on the main area, which is the small garden, that's 25 square meters, 270 square feet, uh, small by my standards anyway. The, the idea is an area that's manageable and that you can get a lot of food from um, all the time in the main part of the growing season, which would be here from April to November, or maybe May to November. And outside that period, even some meals, but not so frequently. But at this time of year, there's something every day and something of interest, something really tasty. 12 different vegetables growing at any one time. And one or two extras like this perpetual spinach here, uh, Caucasian spinach, and it is tasty. So that's climbing up the wall there. It just reappears every spring from roots that survive the winter. And I've actually had a, 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 a death here, which was um, a plum tree that was in the first video you will have seen last September and for some reason it died over the winter and I'm leaving it here for the spinach to climb off of it. The spinach needs cutting back a bit actually before it seeds everywhere um, but it's otherwise very easy to grow. And if we just look at the things in sequence here and I can use them to explain what's worked and what hasn't worked, what's to eat and what's not to eat at the moment or waiting. So for example we have beetroot and these have grown nicely, they're multi-sown so there are clumps of roughly four beetroots planted at 15 inch 40 centimeter spacings. The, the downside, what's gone wrong this year is I, I grew a variety that I was given the seed of and I was assured that it would be like Boltardi, my normal favorite variety, and it actually isn't. It's a variety that's making a lot more leaf than root. It's really not good. So it's, that's an example. I mean, look at this tiny little root I would say with a bolt tidy and that much leaf it would, would have at least a golf ball size root if not slightly bigger. We haven't got it and we've also got some off ones where they're white. This is, this is an example of um, how you need to be careful with home saved seed, keeping your own seed. Um, if there's cross pollination maybe this crossed with a, a white chard or something I just don't know but it's definitely not doing what a beetroot should do. Um, we've got a net over it because that's keeping the sparrows off the leaves. Just here, it's one of my main pests actually. Sparrows love beetroot leaves, so this bird netting is sufficient to prevent that too much damage. And then next to the beetroot is another multi sown vegetable, which is onions. So three, four, and a clump, and they all being well will swell up into nice bulb onions for harvesting late July, early August in about seven weeks. Now here we had rocket in the winter, salad rocket, and that lasted longer than I expected and it was really nice actually. So we left it longer and the result of that was it slightly affected the growth of these plants uh, because they went in a bit later than I'd expected. And then we've had problems this spring with brassicas. A lot of them have just been really poor for whatever reason. Um, the kohlrabi have been splitting, some of them really badly actually. and these are ready to eat now so I'm going to harvest them and we'll just trim off the bits that are not good and, and eat what is good so these will be gone within a day or two and because I then had a gap where the main part of the rocket was here I decided to make this all brassicas actually um, and all brassicas for some reason in most of the UK this year from what I'm hearing have got this really bad plague of cabbage root flies and here's, for example, is a cauliflower plant I put in about three weeks ago. You can see by the colour compared to this one that it's not thriving. It's sort of matte and blue a bit. And I'm going to actually pull it up. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, can you see how easily that's come out? It's actually got almost no root on it because they've been eaten by... There'll be little maggots in there. Don't really want to have a look, but oh, there you go. So, actually wasted time to leave that there sadly whereas this one that feels all right but it's just an example of things that can go wrong and people are, you can put these little collars around the plants to stop the maggots going into the soil when the eggs 
are laid by the flies. But a lot of people who've done that even are saying this spring it hasn't worked, it's just such a plague. Whereas, fortunately, these calabrese have survived that. So we have calabrese here which lovely heart leaves still developing and that will make a, a broccoli head in about three weeks, I should think, towards the end of June. And they'll probably be caterpillars by then. I'll come to them in a minute and explain about that. Firstly, one of the bigger successes of this spring is these lovely broad beans. So we're just about to start picking these. <clears throat> if you look at the earlier videos, you'll see they were sown in October in modules, planted here in November, which is actually a little bit on the early side. Um, because of their very sheltered situation here, and particularly sheltered from that way is east and we had this spring horrible cold winds from the east which actually caused a lot of damage in the rest of the garden and these <laughs> fortunately because they were sheltered survived and they're now cropping heavily and next to them we have some peas <clears throat> now these peas i have been picking for um, pea shoots which is where you take off the top of the growing pea even that little flower, it's all good to eat. You know, you can eat that raw or steam, really tasty, taste of pea. And I haven't been that thorough about it actually, so some little pea pods are also forming. So, you know, that's an example of you can do a bit of both. Um, so this is kind of legumes corner here. And the next one we come to on this bed is, we actually had overwintered parsley here, which was very successful, and as well as leeks. Um, we harvested two and a half kilos of leeks in early April. You know, fantastic harvest, as well as some intercrop parsley. And I was too ambitious then. I popped in cabbage next to the parsley and leeks just while they were finishing. Uh, but the parsley carried on a bit longer than I thought, and basically the cabbage suffered and there wasn't really room for them. So they've just never quite got 100% going. And I think that's the main reason why they've got so pest ridden. And actually we've got caterpillars here. This is the 5th of June and I've not seen that before when they come in so early. Ah, here's one. It's these little green ones. They really are, they're the worst than the um, black and yellow ones because they, they go into a heart. So <laughs> I should squash it really but I'll leave it there for a the minute. What I'm going to do though is harvest a cabbage just to show you that all is not lost sometimes when plants don't look brilliant like this one you can see the the other thing that's going on here is um, aphid damage uh, that's that I attribute to aphids I've noticed it when, I, when if you've got aphids it just happens in the dry spring I've been watering here a bit could have watered a bit more I've also got the neighbor's hedge here taking a lot of moisture so it's not an ideal situation for cabbage and actually this is quite a good result for a plant that's not in a prime position and has had a few pest problems it might need a bit of a wash there might even be a caterpillar in there but basically there's actually quite a bit of nice sweet cabbage there to eat so you know it's not a total disaster but it's just an example of how things can sometimes look pretty bad and you you have got some losses this one there'll be a much smaller heart but i'm going to harvest all of these now and then we're going to plant uh, probably beans my plan is changing all the time uh, for those of you who are very um, quick to notice things, you, you might see that quite a few of the things here are not what I originally planned at, at Christmas time in the film we made on solstice, winter solstice day. Um, this plant is still here though, and that's sorrel. So this is broadleaf sorrel that we've been picking for um, salad actually. It's very nice lemon flavour in um, salad bags. But I'm thinking this can come out now because in the summer it gets quite a lot of holes from um, beetles so um, we actually end up not harvesting very much so I'm going to take these out and we're going to plant leeks here and that'll happen within um, sorry no we're going to sow carrots I just realized leeks are going there we're going to sow carrots here within 10 days time by the middle of June and they'll be good for winter carrots still plenty of time to sow carrots and this is just an interlude where we have peppers. So I planted these uh, 10 days ago from seeds sown in the greenhouse in February. We are in a not a hot summer area here. Our, our summer days don't go much above um, 22 centigrade, 72 Fahrenheit. So 
it's marginal for growing peppers outdoors but two plants they're not going to take up much room if it's a warm summer we'll get lucky it's worth a try and here we have another plant another vegetable that's ready to finish spinach because it's doing what spinach does in the spring that's true spinach it's making its flower head there and when they do that the the, the leaf pattern changes they stop making many nice new fleshy leaves and the, the leaves they make are more matte and longer and thinner there's less moisture in there uh, you can still eat them but there's nothing like as tasty as these earlier big fleshy leaves that's actually why I haven't picked these spinach as much as I would have normally because I wanted to show you on the film the difference in leaf growth and pattern as these plants mature so when you start off with spinach you get these lovely big ones and keep picking them when they get to a decent size and then you will notice eventually once you see that or even this that's no point in carrying on because they're, they're not you know this plant wants to flower now it's, it's given up on leaves so we'll twist these out and this is where we're going to put leeks and also actually there's a bit of wild rocket there which we're going to take out that's been cropping nicely uh, wild rocket's good in the spring but it's starting to get flea beetle and you can see these leaves have got um, ever so many little holes in. Uh, for me that's not good because I'm actually wanting to sell a lot of these leaves and I can't put that in a bag to sell. However, um, for home use actually they would still be okay and they, they taste alright. But since we're going to plant uh, the leeks here or when we want to plant the leeks we'll just twist those out and do that. <coughs> and the last crop in this bed is carrots. Nothing harvested yet so we actually lost the first sowing or nearly all of it because we sow them on the 2nd of April and slugs at most of the seedlings. It was a cold wet start to April. Uh, it was worth a try, you never know, but it didn't work this time. So two weeks after that, on the 16th of April, we sowed again, intersown this time with a few radish and we've harvested the radish already and most of this is second sowing. There are some bigger ones actually, which is the first sowing and I could just see what's going on. There you go. So you can see that they're, they're not ready yet, but they're, they're looking interesting. They're, they're doing nice things. So I'm, you know, I'm happy with that. And also you can see it's actually pretty nice, long, straight root. This, this is no dig. This soil has not been disturbed in any way. It's simply compost on top. There's no fertilizers being used here whatsoever of any kind, just the compost on top. Mostly it's homemade, not entirely. And um, it, it's easy, the easiest way to grow. You're stimulating biological activity in the soil and not worrying about, should I put this or that fertilizer on? Because you're, you're mobilizing your soil's potential with this kind of method. Here we have a beautiful corner uh, everybody's favorite at this time of year where we've got these lovely lettuces lettuce especially when you grow it and pick it in this method is is like an ornamental plant it's it's like bedding um, and it's complemented by the escolcia there that's actually self-sown and it's it's got that lovely pink or um, flower which I, I got from a seed packet about three years ago and it's just kept coming true every spring it's brilliant and the chives that we've been picking and eating a bit and you can eat these chive flowers as well and uh, you want to actually break break up these florets take them off the stem and then all those little petals are both very pretty and actually quite tasty slight chivey onion flavor and the lettuce we've been harvesting we they look a bit denuded because we harvested them this morning we actually took 1.3 kilos or getting on three pounds of leaves off these plants this morning and that was the third pick and there'll be quite a few more picks yet, particularly on some varieties. Some varieties go on longer, like these Lollarossa, whereas some varieties are already going up or thinking to go up to seed, like these little gems. So um, it's good to try a few different varieties. And this morning we left one unpicked, just so you can see in the film what they look like before we pick them and, and the difference between before and after. Now we have um, a nice bit of interplanting going on where in early April we planted coriander and dill and I made a mistake I thought we were planting dill it turned out it was fennel <laughs> yeah I make some quite silly mistakes sometimes um, but actually as it turned out the fennel's all right we got some quite nice fennel that's 
pretty much ready to pick now. You can see by how it's just starting to elongate in the middle there. This won't at this time of year they don't swell up to get fat as much as they do in the autumn so don't hang around too long if you, as soon as you see that distinct elongation you want to get them out because they're starting to go to seed um, so that's the idea and the same with the coriander it's coming to an end now i uh, still some nice leaves so they'll be gone soon and then it, this will be we can concentrate on the tomatoes and actually i haven't looked at the tomatoes for about a week and you can see quite big side shoots growing they need to come out um, so that's a little job to do and, and we're tying these to stakes. I haven't got any string system out here. It's just stout bamboo canes. Uh, these tomatoes may grow a bit taller than this. They're a variety which has been bred at Stuttgart University in Germany to resist blight. So I'm optimistic that we'll get at least half a crop because we're very plagued here by late blight in August onwards. And there's actually one variety that's not, that's a more normal commercial one, that's sun gold. Some of you will know that one. It's beautiful orange, sweet cherry. And you can see it's just getting established now. It's looking healthy for early June. That's great. That was sown. All of these were sown in late March. They weren't sown early. You don't want to sow your tomatoes too early. Um, 20th of March that was sown. And it's going to crop probably in about a month's time. Fingers crossed. And there's also a bit of parsley there. Actually, one or two of these parsley will leave. They were spring sown. Um, we'll just keep picking some leaves from them and then that fennel's going to come out and actually I, I've just realized there's a few things here I forgot to mention which is the the module plants that I've been passing by because before this film I thought it'd be good to put them out like here we've got uh, runner beans climbing beans that we're going to plant in a teepee here and so these module plants are nice and ready to go uh, it'll only be six of them actually not all of these um, six runner bean plants there in a teepee and possibly there we'll then have some kale and again I'm still not too sure there's things keep changing you know when you've got nice plants like this you and you're not worried too much about rotation which you probably notice I'm not too much I try not to follow say brassicas with brassicas too much and that kind of thing but mostly um, with really healthy soil Th this is actually um, some bought compost, multi-purpose compost that I put on after taking out spinach because this piece of ground last in the last film this was still cropping spinach and we had lovely spinach here and that is now finished so I twisted it out and we're going to plant this kale sorry this um, beans at least and over there is the leek plants ready to go and there I'm going to plant some French beans once the kohlrabi is finished so that's pretty well covered it um, there are one or two things happening around the edge here which are quite interesting as well like there's some beautiful um, lemon verbena in a pot there and there's a fig tree here and the neighbour shrubs that I need to cut back now because they're really starting to invade again and there's bindweed here as well which is climbing up some of his plants so that's I'm patrolling these edges it really helps to keep edges tidy um, I've cut down the nettles there just last week they were getting very overgrown and harbouring slugs and snails and we have had quite a bit of slug damage here, but not too bad. And generally, considering we've had quite a difficult spring here, we had a cold, dull April, and it's been very dry in May, but that's been good months for grey. But considering everything, I think there's a pleasing abundance, relative abundance for the time of year, and a, and a lovely variety of things to eat already, and that will carry on. So do um, watch the next video, which we'll be shooting sometime probably in August.